Sky Howdy, and welcome back to another episode of World Bigfoot Radio. Welcome back to the show, and tonight we have returning guest with us from down in the deep, deep south, the Salt River Sasquatcher himself. We have Stephen Hill with us, and before we go on to the show, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the icon that gives you all notifications, and there's some vague chance they might actually let you know when the show comes out. And now back to the show. Stephen, welcome back to the show again. We're going to get updated here on all the stuff he's done since the last time he was on the show. And like most actual field researchers, that means that, you know, things happen. They get pictures, stuff like that. So here we go with the big Stephen Hill, Sulphur River Sasquatcher update. Welcome back to the show. Well, Duke, thanks for having me, man. Been a, been a little while since we've done this. So. Yeah, it's uh, good, to, good to be back. <clears throat> yeah, you got right. it. you got in the gate ahead of William and Daniel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. That's a yeah. I'm, I'm even going to share something that I was going to let William William go with <laughs> tonight. So oh, well, you be... got there first. Now he'll learn to, yeah. that he should answer the phone occasionally. <laughs> yeah, I got the I got the scoop on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So, yeah. yeah, there's been a, quite a bit of activity going on down there because. Uh, we stay in contact quite a bit here and you always keep me updated on what's happening. And oh, yeah. sometimes you send me a picture and then I forward it to somebody else who can do more uh, analysis with it than I can with my Fred Flintstone computer laptop and uh, interesting results oftentimes. So go ahead, take it away. Let's uh, let's go back to when was the last time you were on, like last October or something? I, yeah, I believe it was October the last time I was on and uh, it was after... After we were on, it was, uh, what, about a month after that, I wound up, it was around Thanksgiving, I wound up with a COVID pneumonia, both lungs, so I spent eight days in the hospital, and I uh, missed about a month of work, and it was it was during that time that I was recovering that I, uh, I'd started seeing some, uh, seeing some things. Uh, of course, the first thing I saw is kind of an orange-looking orb. First time I saw it, I, I really didn't trust myself because uh, my oxygen level had got so low. It was the reason why they put me in the hospital to begin with. And uh, I thought, well, maybe it's just a lightning bug. Of course, it was. if it's a lightning bug, it would have to have been like 10 or 12 of them all together, you know. And uh, Flying in formation. Yeah, or somebody flying glued in formation, them together making, or making a ball. Yeah. <laughs> so about the third or fourth time I saw that, you know, it's. A, I thought, well, it's probably not lightning bugs since that's December. And uh, then it was on December 17th that uh, I recorded a video, which I don't know what I, I don't know what I saw. I'm only thing I'm certain of is I'm pretty sure that it wasn't an airplane, because I watch airplanes fly over all the time, and you know they've always got the blinking light when they're traveling east to west. So, which so was wait, the, now this this was an unknown object of some kind. It's unknown to me. And it was know. flying. Yeah, it was flying and not real So it was an either. unidentified flying object. Yes. Yeah, I, I, guess we, I guess technically we'll have to say that's it. Uh, yeah, that's a UFO. So you saw yeah. a UFO. And you got video yeah. of it too? And there's video of it. So let's, I guess. Let's, let's take a look at that right now. Yeah. Okay, that was pretty disturbing. I don't know what the heck that was, but uh, you guys can all make your own decisions on what you think it was. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know for sure what it was. So it's, a, of course, I sent it to you back then, and I sent it to William, and I, I still don't know. So maybe, maybe somebody else will have some insight. They see this. Yeah, you need some people that are, you know. <laughs> I think we were talking about that earlier today. How you can get somebody to look at a, a sonogram. And yeah. they don't know what the heck they're looking at, but you show it to an expert and they're like, oh, that's this. And there's the baby's foot. And there's like, yeah. blah, blah, blah. You know, they know exactly what they're looking at. And yeah. same thing with some of this stuff, you know, like Robin filming that UFO in her backyard. Yeah. Uh, it was, <laughs> okay, we don't know what to do with this. Hey, MUFON, can you investigate this? Here's some video. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. And it, it's I told Robin at the time, you know, whenever they uh, whenever they shared that video that I it was in 2012 or 2013 that I had a, I recorded a video very very similar as far as the lights. What I had back then, what I recorded back then, it was farther away. But I mean the same the same way the lights did, the same colors and everything. And I had to we watched the thing from the back porch at that time for probably 15, 20 minutes. And we finally just got bored and went back in the house. <laughs> you, you still, did you get video? Do you still have video? Um, the phone that I recorded that video on. Won't even oh turn yeah. On. That's why you don't do anything with phones. Yeah. They suck. As soon as they get run over or something, it's like, Oh, yeah. that's gone. Yeah. It was yeah. the world's greatest video, but I recorded it on a phone. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure how many, how many minutes of video I actually recorded it. And, it was pretty neat. I mean, it was all the same colors and everything of what Robin's son-in-law recorded. It was it was pretty cool. Now, I haven't seen it, but somebody told me that there was a video of pretty much the same kind of identical flying object that somebody got video of where they could zoom in way closer on it. And you could see ports in it with occupants really? inside of it. And this was apparently filmed like over in Turkey. Oh, wow. Yeah, I haven't um, I haven't had the chance to record anything that close. You know, of course, if you spend enough time outside at night uh, or Bigfoot and whatever, and you there's no action happening. You just start looking at the stars. Then I mean, you'll sooner or later you're gonna see something that just makes you question things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. If you spend enough time out there, if you know what you're looking for, it helps too. If yeah. you're in the right place at the right time. Oh, That's yeah. for damn sure. So, okay, so we're back to uh, what now, October? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's a, so December, you know, that's, a, that's part of the reason why I was glad that uh, you'd already, you'd already uh, kind of educated me there on uh, hold the phone sideways so I'm not taking a little postage stamp video. So the video the video he showed, you know, it's going to be a full screen anyway. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs> gives you more to work with that's always good yeah. operating principle when you're trying to film any kind of cryptid in the woods or something because while you're yeah. trying to get that thing in the middle of the screen mm -hmm. there might be more in the background and you're catching them now because you're getting this picture view instead of this picture view <laughs> yeah 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 that is that's for sure so that's a, and that's the thing i've tried to focus on a little bit more this year is taking video you know, it's a. <clears throat> I did re I did record a few videos this year, but uh, you know, I, I still haven't got the still haven't got the shot that I would love to have. But I did I did catch a few things. It's a uh, in uh, the the first the first sighting that I had this year was in uh, January January the eighteenth about four forty three is the uh, timestamp that I had on the picture that I took. And what that was, it was a, I guess to give a good bit of background on this right here, uh, Dirk's Lake <clears throat> is a lake in the area, and I happened to be working there. And I was I was coming out of the job there one evening, and I saw some movement. Oh, it was probably 150 yards or more away. So I stopped. I stopped the truck. I rolled past where I could see. So I backed up to see because um, um, I wasn't exactly sure what I saw wasn't sure if you know was that a bear was that a hog I, I, all I could see was something moving so I backed up and I kind of looked at it a little bit more whatever I saw got still which if it had been a hog I don't hogs just don't stop they keep moving no and the other thing is if you're like 150 yards away from it there's got to be a good sized animal for you to notice it oh yeah yeah yeah, I believe so. I mean, it's a, I sent you the picture of that. I sent you the original picture that I sent you one that zoomed in. Now, what I'm looking at and on this thing right here, this 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 one's got some nostrils on him that are that are big. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's been sticking his thumb in there, you know, to stretch him out or something. I don't I don't know. It's uh
<laughs> he, he ought to be able to smell with those things. <laughs> yeah. You know how he smells? He smells terrible. So anyway. Yeah. yeah. So so that was the first time this year that I had that I had something happen. And I kinda kinda held that under my hat there for a while. Because I I mean there wasn't anything moving, so I didn't take a video. And um But you did get a picture. But I did get a picture. So did you try I mean, and go over to where he was sitting and see if you could find tracks or anything? No, that far away, um by myself, no no nothing and it's still out there. I I'm usually not quite that not quite that bold. I'm not bold enough to try to walk up and shake hands with one. Oh, come on. They'll just run away from you. Yeah. I had that one right next to camp, and Sonny saw him, and I went, I'll go over and measure where he was standing. She goes, he was just there three minutes ago. And I went, yeah. right, so you remember where he was standing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good time to go get a comparison. Yeah. She could remember exactly where he was standing only three minutes after she saw him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that that would be a that would be it. That's a, I just that's kind of the last done. thing they really expect you to do, especially if you're not like armed and dangerous or something and hunting them. Just go walking up toward them. They're like, Ugh. yeah, <laughs> human scaring me. I'm leaving now. <laughs> yeah, and, and that that's the amazing thing is I I remember a few years ago I had a another researcher a uh, guy named Dustin Clark from Oklahoma. He had come down to the Falk area. And uh, so I, I took him and some others out that night, and Dustin actually had a sighting. And after the sighting, we we went, and I went, and I stood. That that was one of those times where I went and I stood where he had had, had seen it. And there were several of us. We walked through the woods, and I mean, the woods when we got out to the woods were more open than what I realized they were from the road. And how that how that that one slipped away that we didn't hear it and we didn't see it slip away. That was, that was, uh, I don't know. It kind of, kind of make you scratch your head as to how, because the leaves were dried out, crunchy. I was looking up in the trees to see if it was up, but I never, I never did see it. I never did see it. And that's, that's one of the amazing things that they can do. Yeah, there was one report of the person that saw one run down a trail and then dive into a shallow pit, cover itself with leaves and just lay there. Yeah. And then its pursuers went down the trail and kept on a going. And when they were all gone, it got up and went back the opposite direction again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're definitely, uh, definitely smart. So that's... Uh... Smarter than anything else out there you're going to deal with for sure, you yeah. know. And it's a uh, in uh, fortunate. I've had the, I've had the, uh, I've been very blessed and fortunate that I've been able to meet Robin and talk to her, and she's uh, very insightful. With a, with a lot of lot of knowledge. Yeah, it, it's helpful to be able to uh, have her to talk to, and especially when things get really weird, it's like, okay, what the heck is going on here? Robin, yeah. do you know anything about this? And generally she'll have some kind of idea at least, or she'll know exactly what's going on, one or the other. Yeah. 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 I mean she can she can she can share things with that that was the first time we talked. I mean, she was sharing she was sharing some uh information that I know there's no possible way she could have known on her own. She's never she's never been to my place. Mm -hmm. And she was telling me about some of this and it's kinda that's really, really interesting that you know that. <laughs> yeah, when she was on the, uh, what's that one, Star Trek Bigfoot show, NCCP, <laughs> Tom <laughs> Cardos's, NCC 1701, Tom Cardos's show, North Carolina Cryptid and Paranormal. Uh, and she was telling him about the ones that are hanging around his property. And she described the backyard behind his house and everything in, like, mm -hmm. excruciating detail. She's never been there. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she did. A, she did something pretty similar to me. Yeah, there you go. You know, I, whenever I went to telling her about a about an encounter that I had you know, several years ago. So. Yeah, oftentimes she can give you a lot more information on something that happened that'll, you know, helps mm -hmm. you kind of put it in the proper perspective at least. Right. 
Because sometimes people think it was like super aggressive encounter or something, and it'll be like, you know, no. <laughs> you're no. interpreting it that way, but it wasn't mm -hmm. actually an aggressive encounter. Right. That's a that that that's that's the thing. I, I've never I've never really had an aggressive what I would call an aggressive encounter. I've had encounters where I've I've been scared, but I think that was mostly me just getting scared of the situation because I was caught off guard or uh, something like that. It's uh, you know I had to happen in a. Ooh, what was that? Maybe it was March of 21. I had that happen where uh, we were out researching in the Falk area. And uh, <clears throat> we'd already had one guy who drove a vehicle in down a road toward the uh, water. And he backed out because he saw the water and we didn't, he knew we didn't have a tow rope or anything like that to pull him out if he got stuck. So, uh oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course it was cold and uh, the folks that were with me, they, they get, they froze out and uh, they went and got in the vehicle. They had the windows down. And so I stood out there by myself and I did a call and I got coyotes to answer. And the coyotes, they were separated. There was one coyote that was separated away from the rest of them. And I thought, yeah, I'm out there listening to the coyotes. You know, they're putting on a pretty good show, responded to my call. And I don't know, it's kind of like I had a voice inside of me saying, eh, I probably need to get a little closer to the vehicle. And it was shortly after that, that there was one big tree out there and something sounded like it was at least my size took off through the brush. And when it first took off, I didn't know whether it was coming towards me or whether it was going away from me. I had my flashlight in the, in the pocket of my hoodie there in front. I missed my pocket the first three times I reached for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was one of those times. And uh, later on, tracks were found in that spot. So, How big were they? Uh, I'm thinking they were around 14 to 15. 14. So you had some juvie watching you. Yeah. Yeah. So. They're the ones that get brave. Hey, yeah. watch. Watch this, parents. I'm going to get up close and spy on the humans. Yeah. The parents are like, knock it off. Leave the humans alone. Yeah. <laughs> Quit pestering the humans, you little brats. Yeah. So that well, was do, a. They do the same thing up here. I just showed you that picture we got from the video in Coloma, the one standing there right at the yeah. camp looking. <laughs> Yeah, you had the uh, had the juvenile coming in. Yeah, and then when Blaine Tyler Blaine Tyler saw it, he captioned it, "Hey, what's for dinner?" <laughs> yeah, now that could have been the one. That's a, I don't. I guess I need to give too much away, but that could have been the one that carried off the goodies there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I'm sure he was involved in the whole escapade. I think all of them got it, according to what Robin was saying. Yeah. Yeah. They all they all shared in the pillage. So, yeah, after you. Uh, yeah, that happened. Then what was the the next incident in chronological order? Now you're like into what? Almost early spring. Yeah, we're up to uh, March, and it was in March. Um, <clears throat> working uh, working in forestry, so I'm out I'm out there in some uh, sometimes the remote areas, you know. Uh, Sometimes I've been as far as 12 to 13 miles away from the closest house. You know, we're that far out at times. Well, uh, I guess that's pretty remote. Yeah, it's pretty remote. Not by Montana standards, but yeah, yeah. I guess that's pretty remote. Yeah, for, for Western Arkansas, that, that's pretty yeah, remote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in Montana, it's like, well, your neighbor usually is 10 miles away. <laughs> yeah. But it was it, it was there that I actually caught them. Uh, it was about uh, about ten thirty there uh, one morning on March seventeenth. I was uh, I was at work. The way this job was laid out, we were on one ridge and there was a road at the bottom of the ridge, and on the other side of the road, well, there's another ridge that goes up. And I got to noticing the uh, the dark shadows, you know, they that were appearing there on the hillside. 
So I decided to stop what I was doing and video there for just a just a little bit. And uh, I was able to pull out. Uh, to to me, I think it was a decent screen capture on that on that one there. And I, I believe I'm looking at its teeth. Yep. So it's a uh, and it's a really really dark. Um, Bigfoot. So and that's one of the ways you can use to spot them sometimes because you just look yeah. at the woods and how dark are the shadows. Well, the yeah. black the black colored Bigfoot are darker than the shadows are. So you look for Absolutely. the really dark black spots, and yeah. those are areas of suspicion. Yeah, and yeah, and whenever you have the sun south of the shadows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That that to me that's another giveaway. Yeah. Why do you have some? Why do you have a shadow out there that's darker than the rest of the shadows, when the sun is facing the shadow? What mm -hmm. could be casting it? Well, well, yeah, the shadows in the right, wrong place. Like, okay, yeah. every other tree here, the shadows on the right, but that tree, the shadows on the left. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that. That's exactly it. You know, it's a. It's a, it's like you were talking about with the. People who look at sonograms or people who look at Bigfoot pictures all the time. I mean, our eyes are trained to uh, look for certain things in the pictures, and whenever we see something that we that we recognize, I mean, we're we're comfortable saying, "Yeah, we believe you have something." Uh, and Partially then that's because a, we've seen it over and over and over and yeah. over again. You know, that's part of the 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 way I work with my team up here. You know, that's why we were joking, calling ourselves fat. Forest anomaly team. We're not, <laughs> we're not necessarily looking just for like where is Bigfoot? Let me see part of his yeah. arm, his shoulder, his head. We're looking for anything that's out of the ordinary, anything yeah. that shouldn't be there. Structures, mm -hmm. cryptids, whatever. Anything that doesn't look like it should be there. That's yeah. what we're trying to get to clue in on. So I don't know if that works better or not, but mm -hmm. <laughs> we do see things occasionally and get them on video. Right, you know, it's a, and same thing, same thing for picking out deer. It's a, if you're, if you're trying to pick out a whole deer, instead of just picking out certain shapes and stuff, um, in this area that I live in, I mean, the, uh, here in Southwest Arkansas, I mean, the, the, it, it basically turns into a jungle down here in the springtime and summer. It's, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Visibility, of, what, eight feet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not not very far, not near far enough for me to want to go walking around out there in the woods a lot. So, yeah. not not during this time of year. We got yeah. way too many cotton mouths and rattlesnakes. No, no, no. Yeah. no. So that that's why whenever your season shuts down, that's when mine starts up. Yeah, that's why I keep telling you guys you should be up here during the summer because the weather up here is nice. You can go out there and hike around where it's eighty degrees and there aren't any snakes. Yeah. No that snakes, be... no poisonous spiders, no mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah. And all of that stuff we have here. Yeah, we don't get none of that stuff here. If there are snakes around, I'd be trying to eat them anyway, but there's none here. <laughs> I've had barbecued rattlesnake before. If you make it right, it's really good. Yeah, good. I, I, I've tried that one time, and uh, I guess it wasn't cooked right because I, I couldn't eat it. Mm. I tried. Just like gator tail, there's lots of ways to make it wrong, but it's not very easy to make it right. And if you do it, it's awesome. Yeah, awesome yeah. beyond awesome. Yeah, with gator, I, I can eat gator. I've ate that before. That's that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, rattlesnake are spicy, too, because they got that venom in them. <laughs> <coughs> spicy chalupas. Yeah. So, yeah, what's your, uh, how many, that one... Now, you got the hillside video that you're talking about? Yeah, I've got the hillside video. Somebody can, uh, somebody's watching that on, uh, watching YouTube on TV or something, you know, then maybe they can 
maybe they can pick out some more. I, I basically, I've only, only there was only one that I really liked good enough to you know to do the screen capture on and share with you on it. But I, I believe that there were more in it. Well, the one screenshot you got where it's the long look and there's the hillside and there's like one up here and there's what looks like another one here and mm -hmm. probably a couple more down here <laughs> yeah yeah and this is like what time of day like early morning mid morning uh 10 30 10 30 10 30 in the morning and this is during the winter so it's fairly cold yeah was it a southern exposure yeah so yeah they're, they're sitting out there in the southern hillside getting the sun and warming up yeah uh, that's what they were doing. They were in the sun. They were they were sunning. So, <laughs> you know that that right there would have been one of those times where if I'd had a drone, and I could have I could have deployed the drone within like a minute or two. You know that would have been no telling what kind of footage I may have come up with. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't I don't get that often enough to justify buying a thousand dollar camera or having a two thousand dollar drone to keep with me whenever this happens sometimes it'll happen once or twice a year sometimes it may be two years before i before i see anything again so that's that's the difficult part of it but meanwhile you could just use it for doing beautiful nature shots like uh yeah what's his face over there on how to hunt <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, I'm standing in the river fishing. Check it out. How cool is that? What's that got yeah. to do with Bigfoot? Nothing, but I'm cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you look cool while you're doing that. Yeah. Got to get those cool aerial shots of you, you know, steelhead fishing or whatever the hell that was he was doing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but that's, uh, but through the years, that's, uh, I'm not sure. I'd honestly have to add it up how many times I've had them uh, actually come in, and I've I've spotted them whenever they were watching me working. It's uh, I mean they're they're curious, and oh, yeah. and and sometimes I wonder when I'm at work. I usually wear dark, a really uh, really dark safety glasses. You know the blacked out blacked mm. out lenses on them, and sometimes I wonder if that right there is not part of the curiosity or something you know they're seeing something up there we're thinking what is that <laughs> that thing has weird looking eyes is that one of the space boys yeah yeah that's a that's a weird looking gray <laughs> yeah. that's a little bit on the tall and chunky side for a gray yeah <laughs> yeah we better get closer and spy on them somewhere <laughs> oh yeah yeah but I've, I've had that happen several times through the years when I've been out there doing that. And I, w I wish that I had taken pictures, you know, eight or nine years ago instead of just looking. Yeah. But hindsight. Yeah. Evidence piles up. As long as you're lucky enough to be able to see something occasionally, you should be ready to film it. Oh, yeah. Grab that evidence. Be like Kelly Shaw, run toward him with the camera. <laughs> try to film it. They'll run away, or if they don't run away, you'll get even better video. So run toward yeah. them with a camera. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That would be a that that would be me. I, I can't run too good, so I don't know how well that would turn out. <laughs> yeah. For anybody that hasn't seen Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization, and you think I'm like joking, I'm not joking. <laughs> There's Ch Kelly has several videos where exactly that happens. There's something over there. Grabs his camera, <laughs> runs toward it. Jenny's going, stop, you don't have any weapons. And he goes, grab something. And he runs toward it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, most most time I don't have any weapons with me. So I did uh, I did buy a buoy knife. And I, I, I have that with me. If I'm going to be uh, out and about, you know, walking around, I try to at least have that. Yeah, you got to have some kind of a self-defense implement. That's yeah. a needful thing. Yeah, I'd, I'd hate to have to kill a hog with it, but I'm no doubt, no doubt that we get it done. Yeah. Well, at least it's something to fight back with. I mean, if I was in an area where there was wild hogs, I'd have some kind of a, you know, yeah. like what I usually carry my big honking machete. <laughs> yeah. For dissecting them if need be. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. But uh, but on on this particular year, that, that right there, we talked about that in uh, in March, where uh, I caught those on the hillside. But uh, as May thirty first, uh, we're working in a different area. And uh, I, guess, I guess a little more background on this right here. The very first sighting that I had in 2009 was in this same area. It was within about two and a half miles of where that first sighting happened. Uh, I was at work there. It was uh, 7.49 in the morning is whenever I caught this one uh, watching me work once again. And this is... 25 miles away from where the other other sighting happened in March. Right. So I was uh, I was probably 20, 20 to 25 miles north of where that occurred at. And uh, and it's also in the same same area where I had my very first sighting. And it was within 5 miles of where William took me bigfooting for the very first time in 1988. But I didn't know we were bigfooting until Till 2018. <laughs> and you went, wait. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah, Bigfoot was, around here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it took me a while. It took me a while to figure out that's what we were doing that day, you know. So <laughs> yeah, only, only a couple of decades. So uh, I eventually figured things out. Yeah. What was what was the giveaway? It was uh, William carrying his giant boomstick with him or something? <laughs> no. He's like, let's go to the river. So, so we did <laughs> go down to the river. Hey, it's kind of muddy and squishy, and things leave tracks there. Yeah, but uh, but on that one there, I mean, Robin, she cleaned it up, and you shared it on the community tab there a few weeks ago, uh, where the Bigfoot's actually holding the limb out away from himself, where he can get a better look at me. Yeah, well, that one's yeah. nice because you got two two different pictures of them. He's in different position in each one. So clearly there's animate object moving around there. Yeah. So that right there, I mean, that was that was good. I mean, that was in the same spot a few weeks earlier. Uh, I was up there. Uh, I don't know. I was up there at like four thirty or five o'clock there one morning, and I remember I told you that I'd done a call, which was the first call I had done from since October, because uh, after after I'd been sick and my lungs, it just took a long time for my lungs to recover. Yeah, that was the first call that I did up there in uh, probably the end of end of April or end of May or beginning of May. And I, I remember that morning I did that call because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do one like I could before. And I did the call and I waited and it was probably 45 seconds before I got a response from Coates that morning. And that was that was that was a little bit odd that they waited that long. Most time the responses are usually a little bit quicker than that. But on that morning, I mean, once, once they got going, they, they were going. And also in that same spot, uh, there was another time that I told you I was up there and I was hearing, hearing owls going off, um, uh, till after eight o'clock one morning in two different areas. They were probably half a mile away from each other. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that. And, you know, owls don't usually make noise during the day because then they're arch enemies. The crows find them and attack. Yeah. And uh, also more than one owl during the day. Yeah. Okay, that's really peculiar. Mm -hmm. Do these owls sound like bionic at all? Um, they could have been because I was part of, part of what my problem was is I was down in a low spot. And they were on a ridge to the to the east of me, and there was another group that was southwest of me. 
And uh, it was during that time that I either heard a gunshot or I heard a really loud tree knock. To give you an idea of what uh, what I believe the tree knock, <laughs> to give you an idea of what it sounded like. Yeah, loud, One sharp crack. Yeah, and that's a that's a no hunting area up there where that would have come from. So I'm pretty sure it wasn't a gunshot. Probably so, not. Yeah, I mean, no no firearms are allowed in that area. Right. Maybe there was a poacher in there and a Bigfoot hit him in the back of the head with a log and that was the cracking zone. Yeah, yeah, it was the crack. It was his skull cracking open. <laughs> crack. <laughs> He's done. Uh, yeah, and, and I mean, it was it was a couple of weeks after that, you know, whenever I, I saw that one there that was uh, watching me work. And, Do you uh, get a lot of that activity where you're at, at work there? They tend to be, so you're doing like what, selective logging stuff usually or what exactly yeah. are you doing? Yeah, we, we, we contract and we <clears throat> work private land. So that, that gets us out into the areas, you know, where there's, uh, that allows us to get into areas where most of the public can't go. Yeah, well, and plus that, you're, you know, rearranging what they consider to be their territory. Right. So, of course, they're really interested in what you're doing and mm -hmm. probably not all that happy with it a lot of times either. Probably not. It's, uh, it's. I, I would agree with that. You know, it's a. Uh, you know, we're we're rearranging everything, as you said. So, it, to to me, it would be natural, you know, to see what's coming in and causing, destroying the uh, destroying the trails or whatever all we might be destroying that they've put in place. Yeah. You know, and sometimes I'm sure in some ways it could be beneficial too because if you got a lot of giant old growth and you thin some of it out then you get a whole bunch of undergrowth growing which encourages yeah. all the deer and the browsers on that stuff to be there which then they mug them and eat them so it gives mm -hmm. them more of a food source so yeah. you know in some ways i could see how they'd be like yeah okay you can cut that part down but you know you just start clear cutting the hell out of everything that probably upsets them mm -hmm. pretty bad yeah I, I could i could see that but there's one thing i will say you know with that it's uh a lot of times for the first uh, two to five years or so after after an area is cleaned off and it's replanted, uh, the uh, the deer habitat is really good there for a while. Yeah. And it, that's allowed the deer herd to increase yep. here in the state uh, because I, some guys I used to hunt with, uh, part of a hunting club years ago, 30-something 30, 30 years ago, I didn't know it at the time. But they told me, you know, that in the 50s and 60s here in South here in Southwest Arkansas, if somebody found a deer track, the whole community might go out and look at it because the deer were that that thinned out. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's a uh, people people here they they knew hard times years ago. It took it took a very long time for people to recover in the in the South economically. So, I mean, the possums got thinned out, the coons got thinned out, the deer, especially. So, deer were as, as thin as Captain Picard's hair. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, so now we, when now we have, uh, we have an abundance of them in the area now. So, there's a lot of, there's a lot of easy, a lot of easy meals out there. Yeah. Do you think there's been a proportional growth in the local Sasquatch population due to the upswing in readily available food sources? Not only that, you know, hey, you know, a few decades ago, we didn't have doodly whack for dick, uh, deer here. Now we've got mm -hmm. all kinds of them, but non-indigenous because you've got the, the feral pigs running around down there, too. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it's like that's... suddenly they've got a whole lot more food source than they had a few decades ago. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. And that, that's the thing that I've noticed with the pigs is where I live at. And I know I've got some other people that I know who live four or five miles away from me. And it was, uh, I don't know, three or four years ago or more. I'm probably longer than that now that I'm going to thinking about it. But he was catching, he was catching a lot of hogs every year. And for some reason, the hogs are, they're not increasing in population in this particular area like they once were. Something is, there's something out there that's keeping them. Because hogs, they'll have two or three litters of pigs a year, 
and they might have anywhere from 10 to 15. Right. Now, the most the most piglets that I have seen with a with the uh, adult hogs has been six or seven, which is not normal. Huh. To me. So you think something, there's some, something's predating upon them pretty heavily. Oh, yeah. And it's just like the deer, it's just like the seasons whenever I know that the deer haven't been harvested too heavily. Well, you don't really seem to notice a big increase in the deer the following year. So what to keep the deer in check? Is it scouts or is it something else? Yeah. So. Yeah, it definitely makes you wonder. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a possible answer for that one. Oh, look at the little short video I put out where Eric was down there following William around and he took him out to where the, the pig trap was. And how often do they have to come and get the pigs? Well, they get the uh, electronic notification there's a pig in the trap. And when they show up, usually there's no pig in the trap. And the pig can't get out. So where are they going? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Someone's picking up a 300-pound pig and walking off with it? Really? (laughs) Yes. Uh, I mean, there's there's not that many uh, suspects out there to do that. Uh Uh-huh. So uh, to me, that narrows the field down a whole lot. Yeah. As to what can do that. You know, I know William told you, uh, shared with you the story of the of the hogs that were laid out down there in, uh, down there in the Falk area. Yeah. Well, I, had a, I had a similar story here where I'm at, where there was a, the, a dead hog that was, it had been killed. Uh, I don't know, a hunter, somebody killed it, and they put it in a power line. Well, uh, the guy who owned that deer lease, he was he was kind of curious about it as to who may have killed the hog and left it on his deer lease in the power line. So he went and he looked at it, and the next day he drove out there again, and the hog was gone. It wasn't hadn't been drug off. Something had picked it up and removed the hog, a 200-plus-pound hog. Now, I don't see a game warden or anybody like that going in on a private deer lease in the summertime and uh, picking up a dead hog, why wouldn't he just leave it there for the buzzards to take care of? Yeah, exactly. Rats got to eat. Right. And, you know, getting back to deforestation and whatnot, one of your hot spots down there, Ground Zero, that area was logged off, wasn't it? Yes, that area was logged off in 2017. So there you go. Now it's just getting all the underbrush and everything growing back. Lots right. of deer hanging around there. Yum, yum, easy meals, venison time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that, and that's an interesting thing because that area there, uh, the, um, the ground is primarily um, a sandy type, sandy clay type ground with a lot of iron ore in it. And I know that you've told me that you have a lot of white, white quartz crystal up yep. in your area. Yep. And where I had the siding at up there in May, that's, uh, the ground was covered with white quartz crystal up there. Yeah, we've noticed that up here. A lot of the areas that are, um, well, all the areas that are hot spots up here, they've got quartz. There's granite mm-hmm. and or quartz or just, you know, quartz. Uh, Coloma, there's chunks of quartz as big as your fist laying on the ground. Oh, you know, yeah. Pure white quartz. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's how it was up there in that area uh, near the uh, Costa State Park. That's that's what a lot of that is up there. And, of course, there's lots of the theories roads. about the, uh, you know, everybody knows that if you put pressure on quartz, it creates a piezoelectric effect. Quartz sitting underground mm-hmm. being compacted by the weight of the ground above it is creating that effect. And they seem to hang around where these there's veins of quartz and stuff. So, mm-hmm. you know, is it got something to do with the electrical charge that the quartz is putting off that they're somehow doing something with or taking advantage of? We don't know. But it seems like there is some sort of a correlation between where they hang out a lot, there's quartz. <laughs> yeah. So maybe if you find big quartz deposits, that will also mean that's where they hang out a lot. So this mm-hmm. might be something interesting to look for. Yeah. And uh, places where there's a lot of iron ore, I know the, uh, you know, I mentioned the iron ore that we have there at Ground Zero. And you, you can see the stuff laying on top of the ground. Uh, 
in a lot of places. And um, I know a researcher in Texas, and he told me that he's had a lot of activity in East Texas around areas where there's a lot of iron ore in the ground. So, Well, northern Minnesota, where I grew up, that's the uh, iron range, the Mesabi iron range, which is like, you know, where most all the iron from World War II came from was from the Mesabi Iron Range. And Mesabi in the local native language means giant. Really? Giant Iron Range, yeah. Yeah, so maybe someday we'll figure out what the uh, what the, what their interest is in those those types of areas. You know? mm-hmm. so. Well, again, around the, the, the Great Lakes, there was a bunch of copper mines and stuff, too, and mm-hmm. these were played out long, long, long time ago. Right. And, you know, there's even, they found stone stelae, which have carvings in them that look like Venetians. And they know that, uh, I think it's like 40% of the old copper that's in Europe came from these mines in the Great mm-hmm. Lakes, yeah. you know, to fuel the Bronze Age. So if there wasn't anybody over here in North America, how were they airlifting all of this copper over to Europe to make their yeah. bronze weapons out of it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one of those. Yeah, kind of ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Let's let's protect our ridiculous, stupid theories because we're too lazy to update them and make new books. Hey, books are electronic now. You don't have to print them. Don't. Yeah. It can be a lot easier than it used to. Yeah. So you guys just get your little happy butts in gear and start updating everything. You already are going to have to do some updating because you've been preaching this. Oh, the humans came over here during the last ice age across (laughs) Beringia. Unfortunately for you, they just documented tracks in uh, New Mexico in rock 23,000 years old. Yeah. So much for that stupid theory. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, And there's another track way in Glen Rose, Texas that's uh, either, I'm not sure if it's following the dinosaur or the dinosaur's following it. I'm not sure. How that was, but no. Yeah. Well, that one's that still debated, debatable because they don't want to admit dinosaurs and humans around at the same time. But the yeah. one of the human tracks dated at twenty three thousand. That's not debatable, right? Because they took the layer of rock right under it, and the rock it was in, and the rock above it, mm-hmm. and dated the little pollen that they found in there. You know, right. <clears throat> carbon fourteen dated. And, uh, yeah, you know, so they can tell pretty much exactly how long that little pollen cr- uh, particle has been trapped in that rock. And yeah. the same level where the tracks were at, that's 23,000 years old. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a, no, they had to walk everywhere back then, Duke. There, there, nobody, nobody had figured out you could build a boat and travel yep. very easily. How did they manage to get across the Atlantic or the Pacific without a boat? It's just boggles yeah. my mind. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, during not the last one, but the previous glaciation before that, the North Atlantic was frozen over, too. Yeah. And that would explain why there's those <clears throat> Clovis points over there on the East Coast. Because all these Northern yeah. Europeans are, are, you know, <laughs> they're used to being out in boats on this stuff. And, you know, look mm-hmm. at what the Eskimo were doing. With their little, uh, you know, their little bitty boats and harpooning seals and all that kind of stuff. Well, yeah. they're probably living the same lifestyle along the edge of the ice shelf. Yeah. You're not yeah. actually on land. You're camping on the ice shelf all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, if you keep yeah. going far enough out, the ice shelf goes over to the next continent. And presto, they discovered North America. You know, yeah. Two ice ages ago. <laughs> yeah. And, and that coupled with the fact that the ocean levels were 400 feet lower than what they currently are now. Yeah, there was a lot more land, too. There was a whole bunch of areas in the South Pacific, especially, you know, in that whole island chain down there toward Australia and stuff that uh, right. a lot of that stuff connected back then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or it was so close, the animals could see the next island from the, the tip of this one and go, I want to swim over to that. I can see yeah. that island over there. <laughs> yeah, water, water has never been the deterrent that uh, we've always been told that it was. So. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see. We're getting long on time here. What what else have we got to cover that we haven't gotten to yet? Uh, June tenth. June tenth. June tenth. I found a uh, track in the driveway.
it was a uh, yeah that's pretty cool so they're coming to visit you now you're not out in the woods often enough yeah that's a that, that's an interesting thing it's to me is I, I should have been taking pictures of it this past winter but we have uh all together we have five dogs we have a uh, we have three dogs that get to spend a lot of time inside, and we've got two dogs. They stay outside all the time. The, the two outside dogs are rescues. Uh, we uh, found them at church, or my wife did, and then my daughter, she found out about them. Uh, when my wife first found them, uh, the mama dog had seven puppies, and so she carried food and water out there for her so she wouldn't starve since she was nursing puppies. And a couple of days later, my daughter went out there and she was down to two puppies. Uh -oh. So she brought her home. And uh, one of her puppies did die. And we still have uh, we still have the one pup that survived. And she is solid black, like a uh, black lab. But she's uh, just kind of a medium sized dog. She's not she's not the size of a lab. And. Since there were seven puppies, her name wound up being seven. So, <laughs> but uh, what, what's interesting with seven is she's a collector of all sorts of things. Uh, I've got a neighbor that has, a, has cattle on his place. So she may bring in cow bones, a cow skull. She's brought in. But the other stuff that she'll bring in will be deer skulls with the horn still attached. Well, that's pretty cool. Yep. And uh, she, uh, this past winter, she had a, she wound up with quite a few deer legs in the yard that were not cut. They were broken. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's not typical of a hunter. If somebody's going to dress the deer out, they normally don't break the legs nope. when they're doing that. So, found lots of those laying up on the uh, mountainside up above where I'm living right now. And you just walk around on the trails and like, hey, there's an elk's leg that was snapped. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, an elk leg. If people are familiar with the size of an elk and how dense those bones are, uh -huh. the rope, yeah, that that rules me and you out. Uh uh, yeah, we we not be doing that. Hunters not doing that. And this is in an area where there is no hunting. There hasn't even been shooting allowed up there for 80 years. And you go wandering around up there and you find these random parts and you're like, what the <laughs> hell's living up here? Oh, wait, I know what's living up here. I found their tracks and found them before. Yeah. Yeah. But you guys shouldn't be throwing your leftovers like right next to the trail where the humans are going to find it. You know, it's like <laughs> taking your popsicle stick and going, eh, throw it on the ground. Humans come walking by. Hey, who's snapping elk legs in half and throwing them on the trail? Yeah. yeah you, you can eliminate your team. <laughs> yeah. Humans are not doing that. Are there really huge grizzlies up here doing that? <laughs> yeah. You, you would think with a grizzly you would uh, find bat marks in it. That's all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's one of the dead giveaways. We've had that happen a few times where we were in areas when I used to have Jeff with me and he'd have his wonder sellout dog hank with and hank would disappear and jeff would be like hank 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 <laughs> calling for him for like 15 minutes to the point where you're just sick of it okay everything yeah. within 20 miles knows that you're looking for your dog hank now right yeah. and then hank could just come out of some bushes with his tail wagging and some piece of a deer leg in his mouth and yeah. you're like uh how do you keep doing this? Because he did yeah. this like at least three times that I could think of. And finally, we started going, you're a damn waiter. They're bribing you, aren't they? That's where you disappear to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's a, there's a researcher that I know in Oklahoma who had beagles in a pen. And, uh, of course, he would throw deer legs in the pen. Mm -hmm. And he got to noticing that there would be more deer legs in the pen than what he put in there. <laughs> Where do you think these deer legs come from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who's your neighbor that's doing that? <sighs> as much as a Sasquatch and dogs don't usually get along, I always find it extra hilarious when they're like, they do get along with your dog. And they're yeah. like freaking 
bribing your dog. <laughs> yeah. And you don't even know they're doing it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's like finding it in my driveway. I mean, that's not, that's 30, 30 steps from my house. Yep. That's where the track's at. I mean, seven, seven didn't say anything. Mama dog didn't say anything. It's, yeah. Of course, I guess if you're getting bribed with deer legs during the winter, that's uh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you need some bones to chew on here. Take this yeah. deer skull with the antlers. <laughs> yeah. So that's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I know I'm joking about it, but we started seriously getting suspicious of Hank the Wonder Dog finding these deer legs all the time, just yeah. randomly. Wherever there was an area with Bigfoot activity and big structures, for some reason, he'd be able to find one right away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's. A little too coincidental. Yeah. After he disappears for about 15 minutes, then he comes walking back, wagging his tail. Hey, I found another deer leg. <laughs> yeah, where are you getting all these deer legs from, buddy? We know you're not catching them. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh man. Cheap, good, damn sell-off trader. Oh yeah, that's a uh, that's interesting with the the way that they can have a relationship with dogs like that. Well, it's nice when to see can... that they're not automatically hostile to all dogs. It kind of depends on mm-hmm. how they want to interact and and then how, what the dog is like personality wise. Yeah. It seems like the really aggressive, loud dogs they can't stand them and they just want to beat them against the tree until they quit moving. And then right. some of the other ones, for some reason, they you know. It, I think it just has to do with the dog's personality. If they're quiet, not aggressive, mm-hmm. you know, when Bigfoot wants to sneak across the yard, don't bark and give it away, or he gets pissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there are times. See, the other. Well, I told you we had five dogs. Well, one of our dogs is a seven-pound Yorkie, and so every dog, every dog here is a lot bigger than he is. Uh-huh. Because one of our boxers, he weighs, uh, what's he weigh, 86 pounds or something now. So, yeah. And uh, a lot of times he wants to go outside whenever, he, whenever I open the door for him to go outside. Uh, about half the time he wants to go out barking and announcing his presence with authority. <laughs> so, there's, so there are times when I'm telling him, Jax, shut up before you make something mad. <laughs> You're too damn little. Yeah. You end and, up being and, a pothole filled around a trail like that one little dog that was leading the pack chasing that Bigfoot. Yeah. Yeah. It's kinda of like and he and he's the he's the one that wants to go to the wood line to go do his business. Uh-huh. It's kinda of like, yeah, you, you need to have more sense than that. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, either that or a hollow log to duck into in case it gets hairy hairy there all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> something to hide inside of so was that uh are we up to date or yeah i guess the uh sunday night uh july 24th is about 11 p.m my daughter she was outside uh there's the pool room and she heard three screams uh behind our house so they were a pretty good ways off but uh mama dog uh pressed up against her leg i guess to let her know that I'm here with you or uh, don't leave me or what. I'm not sure what, what it was, but, and, uh, but my daughter, she didn't tell me about that till last night. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. So what, so, have you always had, um, activity on this level where you're living now, or has this been like an uptick? Yeah, I've always, um, uh, ever since we, we've been here five years and there's, since we got here, I mean, it's, uh, we've always had activity. Uh, honestly, the place we lived at before this, we had activity there as well. It was, yeah. a, I mean, from 2009 through till we moved up here, I would hear vocals. The vocals would always start in the fall of the year, October, November down there. And kind of, kind of slack up in the springtime. But I always heard vocals. Uh, a lot of times it would be either be the neighbor's yard, dogs barking at something, or you'd hear the coyotes kick in, and then you would hear something else that didn't match up with the coyotes, didn't match up with the dog. Yeah. 
and uh, you ever seen uh, that meme of the picture looking through the picture window into the yard and the yeah. Sasquatch right there and it says dogs bark at nothing just keep yeah. telling yourself that yeah yeah exactly <laughs> Uh, yeah obviously it was uh yeah the longest howl i've ever heard in my life was down there where i lived at before and uh i think it was probably a chicken litter truck that set it off because uh with those chicken litter trucks i don't hope i hadn't hope i didn't share this story on the last show but is uh you know they'll, they'll sometimes they'll take those those two-ton trucks and they'll take those duels off and they'll put just one really wide tire on each side of the back end of the truck, kind of a flotation type tire. And uh, those things will howl uh, going down the road, just like oh, these big yeah. four wheel drives will. You can hear them, you can hear them coming before you see them. And that's how that was. And I could hear that truck that morning, uh, long before it ever got to my house. And it was about the time that thing went by my house is the coyotes were carrying on and then there was a howl in there i've never heard one that matched it it was just unreal how long how long it lasted you you've probably heard some stuff like that being up there and uh, where the bigfoot are really big but uh yeah that doesn't necessarily mean they're really loud i mean when william was up here was the most active vocally they've ever been and mainly all they were doing is just whistling at us um, you know, usually we, it's really rare that we hear, I've never heard a T-Rex roar in the, in the really? woods ever, never, never heard it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've, I have. And that one that morning probably could have, uh, probably, probably could have been classified as that. I've actually recorded it here where I'm at now. I mean, it's just not a, it's just not a real good recording. Yeah, but uh, I mean that mama dog that I was telling you about earlier. I mean, I, w- I was just seeing her, her behavior that day, and I knew something was I knew something was around, and that's why I said audio out that night. So yeah. I mean, if if you got dogs that are outside dogs and they've got a little bit of sense about them, pay attention to them. They'll let you know what's going on. Oh yeah. Well, in, in general, that's their job. <laughs> yeah. That's why we started keeping them. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Why baboons started copying us and keeping them. Yeah, you know, that's probably why mine are getting bribed with your legs. <laughs> so now all you guys that, that have uh, dogs that don't bark at anything at night, and they have these suspicious deer legs yeah. on the yard that they somehow get. Uh, there might be a, where there's, there might be a reason that this is going on. There might be someone bringing them these suspicious deer legs, and that's yeah. why they're not barking. Yep, uh, I believe that could very well be the case. <laughs> there seems to be a pattern there. <laughs> the suspicious mm-hmm. deer leg bringers and the quiet dogs. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the ones they handed to Hank didn't basically have any meat on them. It was like from the hook to like part way up to the knee, you know. So it's like, yeah, it's a chew toy. Yeah, well, some of these here they still had a little bit of meat on them. I mean, they did they've been picked for the most part, but there was still a little bit on them, mm. and they were fresh. Oh, so, so weren't wasting any time giving out the bribes there. No, <laughs> definitely want those dogs on their side. Yeah. Did you have audio, that one audio recording of what you were talking about? Were you going to send that with or? <sighs> yeah, I, will, uh, I will, I will try to send that. Yeah. Uh, Cause that'd be fun to play. We don't get a whole lot of audio recordings. Most of the people are focusing on, you know, making track casts and getting video and stuff like that. We don't get a whole right. lot of audio captures that are really good. Mm-hmm. So it's fun when you can get something that you can tell is like, hey, what's that? Yeah.
Sounds like, uh, you know, T-Rex yeah, running around out in the woods. Yeah, I will, uh, I will see if I can get that to where I can send it to you. Right on. And, uh, because it's a, it, it's not bad. I mean, it's like I say, I mean, it's not the best quality audio, but I, I think everybody would be able to tell that it's not, uh, not something that people would normally think of being in Southwest Arkansas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've heard some pretty strange audio recordings from down there in the South too, where it's like, yeah. that's not any animal that lives in the South. I don't know no. what's making that noise, but that's not any animal that lives in the South or that's known yeah. or supposed to live in the South anyway. Right. All right. So with that, uh, was there anything else you wanted to cover? Or? I, I I think we kind of caught up. I'd be afraid to try to go back over anything else. Okay. In fear that I may have already told it. So. Okay. I think we got her all covered then. Well, thanks for the updates. I really appreciate it. And okay. thanks for getting into the, the getting in the gate before uh, William and Daniel <laughs> managed. <laughs> yeah. Well, they got probably they got plenty of stuff to show too. Judging by what I'm hearing from uh, William, there hasn't been any shortage of activity over there where he's running around too. Right? No, no. There's been there's been plenty of activity this year. There really has. Same thing up here. I just need to get out there more. And by the way, if there's anybody that's uh, planning on being in Western Montana or lives in that general area, I am running out of Montana Bigfoot Project team members. One of them moved way up to the north, almost to the border. He's too far away to get down here and do research. And uh, one of them's having uh, physical problems, can't get out in the woods at all. And the third one is having vehicle problems, just like I am. So if there's somebody over here in western Montana who wants to get involved in getting out there in the field doing Bigfoot research, get to see their very own Sasquatch if they haven't already seen one. And, uh, you know, generally have fun camping here in western montana and collecting evidence and uh you know getting to be on uh youtube shows and stuff like that get old me world bigfoot central at yahoo.com that is world bigfoot central all one word at yahoo.com join the team be cool and uh not a fool and don't drool because <laughs> we rule that was a mouthful <laughs> Stream of consciousness. is. In case you guys can't tell, I'm like really exhausted today. So I'm having trouble actually conducting a decent interview with Steven. He has the upper hand at this moment because uh, my brain isn't working very well today. I should have probably <laughs> drank more coffee or something before we tried to record. But hopefully it makes sense and you guys all had fun listening to uh, Steven because, you know, that's the point of the show. Not to listen to me yammer on but to listen to all the exciting adventures of other researchers, legit researchers from other parts of the country and what's going on there and getting updates from them, catching up with all the stuff that's been happening recently. And, of course, this is because, you know, it's real. We're not making crap up. This stuff is really happening. And it's not just one or two people. There's a lot of people going out there from the Arctic Circle down to Mexico. Mm -hmm. And they're finding a lot of the same stuff and documenting right. it. So at this point, anybody that says, you know, Bigfoot doesn't exist, that's ludicrous. You haven't looked at the evidence or you're an actual liar, one or the other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, too many people, too many people coming up with the same type of evidence. Yeah. And keeping in mind only one has to be legit. Yep. Everybody else could be completely full of it. And as long as one of these witnesses is telling the truth and producing pictures of something that's real, it's real. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it from that standpoint, the threshold of uh, data and evidence that you need to reach in order to conclude that it's real is one real report. That isn't very much. <laughs> it's yep. very, very little. <clears throat> and how yeah, many do we have every year? You guys probably have several dozen just from the area that you and William are in. There's mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds across the U.S. every year. Right. Yeah. And 
Um, I'm a firm believer, knowing knowing what I know from this area and William knowing what he knows, uh, people don't people in this area they don't they don't take time to go file reports or call the police or something like that. Uh, sooner or later, you'll you'll finally get somebody who's finally willing to share what they saw. Yeah. So. Well, there's areas up here in Montana where it's rural enough that it's just like assumed that everyone knows that Bigfoot is real. And what do you mean Bigfoot mm-hmm. is real, weirdo? Right. You're not from this area. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody yeah. in the area knows that it's real. They just take it as a course, you know, like, well, of course they're real. Yeah. Grizzlies are real. Moose are real. Bigfoot are mm-hmm. real. Of course they're real, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's not a, it's, it's not a. It's definitely not a not a debate with me anymore. I mean, I, I did go through the period of time, you know, where I was, I was all on board one week, and the next week I was skeptical. And that just, when when you finally, I don't know, for me, I guess it took a while, but uh, once once I finally had the second sighting, and it was basically information overload. Uh, it's gone. Yeah, no more. No yeah. more. No more doubts for me. Now, there's an example right over your shoulder there, that big picture that uh, William yeah. got of that big mama carrying the baby on her shoulder, stepping yeah. over a log. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I know. I, I've had I've had a few people who've seen that, you know, and they say, I, "What what kind of a building is that?" And it's, uh, well, that's not a building. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Large female Sasquatch stepping over a log with baby on shoulder. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a, that's a few years old now, so we're not sure how big that little one might be. Yeah, it's probably your size by now. <laughs> yeah, probably so. <laughs> so that's a. <clears throat> but yeah, that's a that that's that's the other thing. I mean, we we've we've had we've got pictures of several babies, and they're not the same ones. So. Yeah. Uh, just just like the picture that Daniel got from Ground Zero this year. Uh, when I look at the picture, I believe that there's a little one in the picture beside the big one there, yeah. beside that big face that you can see. I believe it. Well, you know, in my research area, we got the same thing going on where with just the random pictures we've caught of them, and you know how they like to bunch up. Yeah. And then you have oh, like yeah. two or three of the little ones will all be hanging around a pile, and you can see eyeballs, 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 you know. Yeah. Well, you start figuring, well how many of them are in this valley and how many kids are they having? And of course I can cheat cause I got Robin to help me with that. Right. But they got like half a dozen little bitty ones up there. Mm-hmm. And the ones that were like the human sized juvies are now getting to be quite a bit bigger from seven years ago when we started going mm-hmm. up there. Right. And all of them are used to following us around from the mm-hmm. time they're little bitty babies. Yeah. <laughs> they're following us around. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was uh that was one of the things that kind of um threw me a lot last summer because we kept getting uh accidental images of them with lots of the young ones right mm-hmm. next to us, which is really, yeah. really disturbing. I mean you can see the adults getting close to you, but letting the kids get that close to you mm-hmm. that's like wow, uh, you know, usually they would they'd never do that. They won't let you get yeah. any damn where near the kids, much less let the kids go follow you around. Right. So I'm not saying I'm special or anything. Maybe I am, but in the wrong way, because I find this yeah. very disturbing and not at all safe. The adults have more common sense. They're not going to do something rash and stupid like maybe the kids are going to do. Right. And, you know, if they do something, you better not react to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, definitely continue to stay calm cool and collective yeah i never thought i'd be in that position where i'd have that many of them following me around where i'd actually have to be worried about it because it's not the adults that are following me around it's the kids following me around yeah we get that one sequence on the video where i was trying to film the comparison shot and i'm walking up to this big pile of fallen trees and right before i turn around you can see on the video, there's a little one who's got his face in between two of the fallen logs, and he's reaching out like this with his hand. He's waiting for me to turn around so he can't coo on me, little cheater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but that's how close he is. You know, and the, and the only adult we could find in there was way back by the tree line. And she's got another one about 30 feet up the tree next to her watching yeah. me. But there's like three or four of them right there by this log jam, right where yeah. I'm at. She's nowhere near. Mm -hmm. What kind of parenting is that? <laughs> it, evidently, for some reason, they trust you a little bit. Dude, oh, man, so. that's way too much for me. I don't like that level of trust. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't want to be your babysitter, although the kids are cute. <laughs> yeah. They're really cute and adorable, but I still don't want to be their babysitter. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can just imagine what your reaction would have been if, if if the juvenile had knocked your head off your head. So. Yeah, or if I had noticed that he just touched me right as I turned around. Oh, something yeah. in the log pile behind me just reached out and touched me. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> It's yeah. bad enough noticing it after the fact, having your friends go, hey, do you see this in this picture here? <laughs> There's two of them in this log pile that you're standing right next to. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. No, I didn't <laughs> notice that, but no, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's way more fun to be scared after the fact than it is to be scared while it's happening. Uh, I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, wow, I'm so glad I didn't see that while I was there because I probably would have had a heart attack and just died on the spot. Good thing yeah. I didn't notice it. Oh, yeah. You're right. <laughs> <sighs> but, yeah, it's not it's not comforting. Well, that's like the Coloma thing that last time we were there. I was filming, right? First night we get there, Thursday night, set up camp as fast as we can. It's almost dark. Quick do a pan around camp with the video camera. Well, Christy's looking at it, and she goes, Duke, there's something right here. It sends me this crop with, you know, circle around it, red circle. I'm looking at it, and I'm like, yeah, there's two trees. There's a part where branches come across. There's something standing right there in between the two of them. And you can see the one tree trunk coming up. And tree trunks, keeping in mind, they start out thick, and they get thinner as they go up. Well, this tree trunk starts out thin and gets thicker as it goes up, <laughs> and it's got hair on it. So that's yeah. looking a lot like it's a leg, right? So I'm like, okay, this doesn't even look like a Sasquatch. What is this? So I send the picture to Robin, and Robin, you know, she can see energy signatures, and she goes, that's a dog man. I can see the energy signature. And there's a little one right down on its right-hand side sitting on the ground. So there's a little dog pup or whatever you want to call that. Oh, there's also yeah. So I'm like, oh, yeah, that's really what I want to see. Yeah. First night we're up uh, camping in this ghost town. You got a dog man about 50 feet away watching us set up camp. Yeah. Yeah. I feel so safe now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you, you get your own dog man watching you. So it's. Yeah. Well, it's apparently, a... if, if they're hanging around to the Sasquatch up there, they're pretty nice. So hopefully this one isn't uh, dangerous or God knows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When that other stuff starts showing up, that's that's when things always go to making me question what I'm doing. Well, it's yeah, and it's bad enough because that's the problem when you get these really active areas. There's multiple types of cryptids. A lot of times, it isn't just Dogman or just Bigfoot. You got a whole bunch of weird things running around, and they don't know what you're going to run into while you're there. Right. You know, like, oh, well, I'm over here to do Bigfoot research. Well, so what? There's a Dogman hanging around there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah <laughs> and nice. he's not going to just go wander away because you happen to be there going, I'm looking for Bigfoot. No other cryptids come out now. You guys ought to leave. Yeah. I'm just doing Bigfoot research here. Spooks, monsters, get out. Mm -hmm. Bigfoot only. Doesn't work that way. Right. You're, you're talking about that. I mean, I've had people share with me some odd stuff that they've seen. It's, I don't know. It doesn't fit into, doesn't fit into Bigfoot or Dogman. Yeah. Category. So. Yeah, and I know a lot about a lot of different cryptids, and there's some of the stuff that I can't ID either. And yeah. there's stuff that Robin can't ID. And as it turns out, the Bigfoot have a name for cryptids that they don't know what it is. They've got an actual <laughs> name for that. So they encounter things that I don't know what the hell that is often enough that they have a name for that. Oh, good night. 
So, yeah. yeah, we don't have to feel like completely incompetent idiots. Even the Bigfoot get confused occasionally and go, I don't know what the hell that thing is over there, but I'm leaving right now. <laughs> yeah. If the Bigfoot decides to leave it alone, I think that would be a really good move for us, too. Yeah, you figure generally they're pretty well acquainted with most of the kinds of cryptids that are probably hanging around their area. Yeah. So if it's something weird that they don't recognize, could be dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Could be time to leave at that point. All right. Well, I want to let you go here and everybody else. Hope you enjoyed the show. It was great meeting with Steven again and trying to get him up here this summer, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Maybe I can get him to show yeah. up next year. Yeah, hopefully someday I'll get to make that. I'd love to. You know, because, like, it doesn't matter if you see a Bigfoot while you're up here or not, because you're still going to see the largest tree structures on Earth. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. that would would be be really cool to see that. Yeah, you want to see a skyscraper-sized tree structure? They make them right over there. (laughs) (laughs) New ones, too. They even build additions onto the ones they already made. (laughs) Lots of fun. That kept us going back there for years. We weren't actually getting any video or pictures of them or anything, just finding tracks. But the structures are so damn impressive. It's just like, oh, my God. You can't even yeah. believe how colossal they are until you're standing underneath them. And then you're like, okay, I really don't want to meet whoever made this. <laughs> <laughs> Could you like a little ant down at the base of this thing? Dee, 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 dee. Yeah. It's like that big. <laughs> oh, God, horrible. All right, everybody, be kind to everybody else. You know what the drill is. If you want to join the team, get a hold of me, World Bigfoot Central at yahoo.com. And don't forget that we have lots of cool swag. You can help support the team effort, get me out in the field more so I can film more Sasquatches for you to look at. And all you need to do is donate PayPal me at uh, World Bigfoot Central. Or you can go buy some swag from Teesprings, which is teesprings.com store world of Bigfoot Central. Links will be in the description below. They always are. If you need to get a hold of me, it's always in the description below. It's not a big mystery on how to find Duke. Email address is always in the description below. <laughs> <laughs> Every episode is in the description below. So people that keep going, I don't know how to get a hold of you, Duke. Do you ever read the description of the video? (laughs) All information is in there. So, okay, until next time, everybody, love you all. Be kind to each other. And make sure that whatever you do, you don't hug any Wookiees. Bye.